after all this time, it has appeared that Bennett is the true king of elemental mastery. Hey, welcome back. Today, we're going to explore elemental mastery on Bennett, both on the main DPS Bennett as well as support Bennett. Benny Bokendan, Chipatsu! As always, let's get started with the basic. Here, before we drop Bennett ults, you can see that I have about 1000 attack, which is 613 base and 560 bonus attack. Now, I'm going to drop the Bennett ult and you can see that the Bennett attack increased all the way to close to 2000. And that is because Bennett Elemental Burst is able to provide a attack bonus ratio to whoever is standing on the field. Here you can see I have Elemental Burst level 7 and it gives 84% attack bonus to whoever is standing on the field. Know that this attack bonus is scaling off Bennett based attack. Uh, so for example here I have 202 white numbers and so I'll grant whoever is on the field 80% of this white number. And if you have Constellation 1 unlocked it, you will be able to get a 20 additional percent as well. So the most common strategy is to pair Chongyun with Bennett and you use Chongyun elemental skill to convert Bennett normal attack to cryo element. And then which let you melt the elemental skill on Bennett as you can see in the clip here. Note that Bennett Yi only have a 2 second cooldown when you tab it because of these two talent. And so your combo is free normal attack into a Bennett Yi and then free normal attack into a Bennett Yi. And so now we raise an interesting question. Since Bennett Elemental Burst gives so much attack percent, is it worth building more attack percent? Or perhaps we can build Elemental Mastery? So with all of those being said, math today is very very easy. All we have to do is check if Elemental Mastery is better when we consider a sequence such as free normal attack followed by a Bennett Yi, uh, which of course will produce melt. And luckily for us, we already have a program written which will calculate it for us. And so here is the result. So let's digest this graph and see what's going on. Starting off moving toward the right side on the X axis. This is as we build more and more elemental mastery, meaning we sacrifice other stat for it, such as attack percent, critical rate, or critical damage. And of course the Y axis going up is our damage. As you can see, the highest point on the graph is actually on the very very left, meaning that we do not build elemental mastery and instead we just go for the traditional golden ratio stat routes, which is attack percent, critical rate, and critical damage. But something I want to point out to you is this point right here. This point is the 300 elemental mastery mark. And as you can see, it is pretty much equivalent to not building elemental mastery at all. So perhaps maybe with a bit more attack, we can make elemental mastery good? There's actually a couple of ways we can increase the bonus that we get. Uh, the first way, of course, is to further increase our talent level. But a easier way is actually just to unlock the first constellation, which gives you an additional 20% Bennett based attack. And let's see what happened. And wow, would you take a look at that? Here you can see the highest point on the graph is actually here, which is around the 300 elemental mastery point. Uh, which of course is contained of your hourglass main stat being elemental mastery and just having a level like 1 substat on the rest of your artifact. And you might be confused that why is the graph overall trending down but have a spike at the 300 elemental mastery mark. This is because this is the point where we switch from main stat attack on our hourglass to a Elemental Mastery main stat on the Hourglass. And for the rest of the graph, this is us allocating substat into Elemental Mastery, which is not worth because we could just be doing crit and crit damage instead. Now at this point, you must be wondering, what happens if we can get even more attack? For example, the Pyro Resonance, which gives us a 25 extra percent attack bonus. Or perhaps maybe we could just raise the talent level of Bennett Elemental Burst. Unfortunately, this is pretty much the same. Uh, this graph here includes both the Power Resonant as well as a max talent level Elemental Burst, which is level 15 Elemental Burst on Bennett. And the result is pretty much the same. You can see that the graph overall is a downward trending trend as we build more Elemental Mastery, except its spike on the 300 mark, which is saying like, just to build elemental mastery on the hourglass main stat. 
So yeah, if you're playing main TPS Bennett, go for Elemental Mastery Hourglass, but not on your substat instead. Just look for the critical rate and critical damage on your substat instead. With that out of the way, let's move on to another topic, which is Bennett support. Now, for a lot of you, when you're playing Bennett support, you are probably running a Noblest Artifact set because this gives you an additional 20% attack. So let's suppose you're running something like the Deluxe Shinshu comp, which currently is the most consistent comp to proc Vaporize Reaction. And then you bring in a Bennett support for double Pyro Resonance, and of course, the power resonance give us another 25 attack again. And we have so much attack again, and at this point we ask, is elemental mastery worth? So do I switch from this attack percent hourglass to a elemental mastery hourglass, for example? So a typical deluxe Xingqiu combo might look like this, where you start off the fight with your elemental burst and vaporizing it, and then you rotate between your elemental skill as well as your normal attack which lets you keep on vaporizing each attack. And without a surprise, we get pretty pretty much similar results. As you can see, there's a very very huge spike on the 300 elemental mastery point, which is converting your hourglass from attack percent to elemental mastery. And it's not worth converting substat as well because those should be going to crit. So yes, Elemental Mastery on Argos is good, as long as you have Bennett. For comparison purpose, this is what happened without Bennett. As you can see, the graph mostly go toward a downward trend as we build more and more Elemental Mastery. But wait, you might have noticed in this graph, even without Bennett, the Elemental Mastery is still spike at the 300 point, although not by much. So did I lie to you guys this entire time about Elemental Mastery being good? Well, a little bit. What you have to understand about Elemental Mastery is that Elemental Mastery is only good if you have a lot of attack already, and so building attack is no longer worth. Here is the same previous graph, except I took away both the Pyro Resonance, which is 25% attack, as well as the 20% Noblest buff. And here you can see that this entire graph is going toward a downward trend, even though we can perfectly vaporize every single one of our attack. And remember, Elemental Mastery only gives you damage if you're doing a reaction, where attack gives you damage regardless of whatever you're doing. So if your Xingxiu Elemental Burst is on cooldown, or your Deluk Elemental Burst is on cooldown, then you can't really produce consistent reaction. And so Elemental Mastery would not really be that beneficial. It's just that Bennett is allowing you to overcome that barrier because he gives so much attack. And in fact, let's rewind it all the way and let's see what happens if we cannot consistently vaporize. Here in this graph, it's the same scenario as before. We do a Deluxe Xingxiu combo and adding Bennett on top of it. Not only we add the Pyro Resonance as well, but we also add the Noblest. So we have a huge amount of attack. But even with that much attack, Elemental Mastery is still only okay and instead just about equivalent to our normal build when we cannot consistently trigger Vaporize. And that is of course because of Elemental Mastery provide no damage bonus at all if you're not triggering a reaction. So consistency is the key here. And so what did we learn today? Elemental Mastery Hourglass is good if your team contain Bennett or your Bennett is your main DPS. And your main DPS should be consistently be able to do either Vaporize Reaction or Melt Reaction. For example, a Deluxe Xingqiu. Electric Reaction are not good enough to build Elemental Mastery with, as we have talked about a lot before. So only do this if your main DPS can consistently do Vaporize or Melt. And finally, of course, make sure that you're in Bennett Elemental Burst. But what this means is that you have to build Energy Recharge if you're doing Support Bennett make sure that his elemental burst is consistently up. And if you're able to fulfill all three conditions, then building elemental mastery on your hourglass is actually good. This is why you see people building elemental mastery hourglass on one shot Mona, because you can fulfill all three conditions very very easily, and so building elemental mastery here is actually a beneficial move. And that's pretty much conclude today's video. So after all, Yes, Bennett is the true king of Elemental Mastery. 
I hope you guys learned a lot today, and I hope to see you guys next time as well. So be sure to subscribe, and until then, see ya.